Hi, this is Scientist Rachel. I'm back with Scientists Buddy, Sunny, and Jack. Today we are on Chapter 1, Lesson 3. We are doing Activities 1 through 4 in this lesson. We are in Waves, Energy, and Information. You will need something to write with and something to write on. So we're marine scientists and we're figuring out how sound gets from a mother dolphin to her calf. Um, we learned that sound is a wave, so we have started investigating waves. We can't see sound waves, so we have been observing different types of waves. We know that waves can move up and down. We also know that waves can move back and forth. There are different kinds of waves. We also know that wave is a pattern of motion and wave begins at a source. Today we're going to read about a tsunami, which is a type of water wave. Learning about this uh, wave's pattern of motion is going to help us understand how sound moves. So this might help us figure out how um, sound come, gets from the mother dolphin to her baby calf. Um, we obviously can't have a tsunami in our homes. That would be a little bit dangerous. Um, so we're going to do something called visualizing. When you visualize, you think about, you're, you're making a movie in your head, um, or picturing in your head, um, information that comes from different source, uh, sources, including the books we've been reading. Think about also the rope wave that we've used in the spring toy. We made, both made waves with those as well. So when you're reading Tsunami, think about those and patterns of communication. Um, here we go. Oh, one more thing. Informational text, like the one we're about to read, always has a visual representation, usually a diagram or a picture or a chart, and these can help us understand the information that's coming from the book. Tsunami warning. Sirens wail and a warning comes over the radio. It's time to flee the coast and move safety, a move to safety on higher ground. A tsunami is coming. Tsunamis are powerful and dangerous ocean waves. These waves can travel thousands of miles across the ocean. They may cause floods and terrible destruction when they hit land. What causes a tsunami? Underwater earthquakes are the source of most tsunamis. Most tsunamis happen after an earthquake jolts the seafloor up and down suddenly. When the seafloor suddenly moves, it disturbs the water above it, moving the water upward letting it fall back down. That up and down motion movement of the water is the beginning of a tsunami wave. The tsunami wave travels out in all directions from its source. Not all earthquakes cause tsunamis. To cause a tsunami, an earthquake must happen under the ocean. It also needs to move the seafloor with enough energy to disturb a lot of water. Most tsunamis happen in the Pacific Ocean because earthquakes are very common there. So we're gonna look at the diagrams and visualize. Again, you're making a mental picture of what happens to the water under the tsunami. So the, as we're thinking about these pictures, we're gonna see them on the left. Um, think about the rope that we used just yesterday. So before an earthquake happens, everything is calm, the seafloor is fine, the water above it is just being normal, right? So then an earthquake disturbs the water above it. So the seafloor is lying, is calm. And then all of a sudden, boom, an earthquake happens and the seafloor is jolted. So the up and down movement of water becomes a tsunami and the tsunami water travels outward in all directions. So again, the seafloor is calm, then an earthquake shakes the seafloor. So again, think of the rope. So I have the rope. Jolt, jolt, and then it's the wave is going up and down. So I have a question for you. Is a tsunami wave the same as what happened to the rope wave or is it different? So scientist Buddy thinks it's the exact same. Scientist Sunny, however, says it's slightly different. So drum roll. Scientist Sunny is correct. So yes, the rope does move in an up and down motion, right? So calm. But if you notice the rope wave, it's only going away from the source in one direction. It's traveling outward. When you have a tsunami, the tsunami happens, it's jolted, and the waves travel outward in 
all directions, so that's how they're a little bit different. So we're going to read together to see how they're different. Um, people often think of tsunamis as extremely high waves. However, a tsunami wave is all, not always very high. Tsunamis are often just a few centimeters, a couple of inches high, as they travel across the ocean. Out in the open ocean, a person in a boat might not even notice a tsunami wave traveling by. The passing up and down of water does not harm ocean animals. So I have my little furry friend here. Even know what he is. He's adorable. But he is two inches tall. So that wave is not very tall. And it's not harmful to the sea animals. So far we have studied three types of waves. I would like for you to write down these waves um, and the information that I have on the other side of it. I want you to write down the, the name of the wave. Tell me how it travels. What is the pattern of motion? And what is the source of each wave? So here we go. We have rope waves. So they travel up and down. The pattern of motion, they travel away from the source, right? So if I'm flicking the, the rope, it travels away from my hand, which is the source. The spring toy waves, again, they travel back and forth. So when I fling it, fling the slinky, the pattern of motion travels away from my hand. And then we have tsunami waves. Those travel up and down. The pattern of motion, however, travels in all directions from the source. So all directions from the source. So we have a key concept, and you can write this down in your notebook as well. A wave is a pattern of motion that travels away from a source. So, two questions um, I'm going to post to you here before we um, go on tomorrow. Is it possible to stop a tsunami wave? And how do people know to prepare for tsunamis and how do they stay safe? So, when I grew up in California, um, that was one of the big things we always worried about. Is how are we going to know a tsunami is coming and are we going to get away in enough time? So, so far we've been investigating different kinds of waves to prepare to understand sound waves. So again, we're trying to study the big question is, how does a mother dolphin communicate to her calf? And we know it's sound, but how does she do that? So in the very next lesson tomorrow, we're going to begin to explore sound waves. It's a very fun lesson and I'm really excited to see you tomorrow. So thank you scientists for hanging out with us today and we'll see you tomorrow.